Hello everybody, how are you all doing today? Good? I'm good. I'm a little bit tired, but I had class at 6am again. But tomorrow's my last day of class, which is crazy. Because I still don't know what I'm going to do in October. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're new here, hi, I'm Iku. I'm... Well, this is my rebranding. I usually go for... I am an illustrator based in Brussels, but right now I'm going for... I am an international student that's supposed to be studying in Japan right now, but I can't because of the COVID and the borders are closed. <laughs> so I'm stuck here in my mother's attic, not really knowing what I'm doing and taking classes online at 6 a.m., which is kind of rough, even though I love classes and I love learning Japanese. 6 a.m., my brain is not awake, but... <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's me at the moment. That is my new uh, official title. Forget the illustration, forget the YouTube, forget the everything else I stand for right now. I'm a stranded ass student. Yeah. Anyway, welcome back to an episode of me reacting to past episodes of my Japan solo travel, which is something that we're doing to keep us patient. I don't know why I'm struggling to find the words because that's a very simple explanation. It's to keep us patient while we're waiting and uh, try to keep us positive and hopeful, waiting to see if the borders are going to reopen on time for me to go there and resume my classes. Guess who is joining us today? I just heard his little... Hi. There we go. Where I am, he is too. <laughs> Joining us for our episode, as usual, stop showing your booty. Oh, it's my baby boy who has an ear infection. My poor little boy. Oh, okay. Go there and rest. Um, <laughs> I don't remember what I was saying now. So the episode that we're watching today is episode number 12 called Alone in Kyoto, as always, from our 2017 solo trip to Japan. Um, I don't remember much from this episode. I do remember the beginning of that day. I do remember in... Oh, that's where you're gonna lie. Okay, sure. I do remember um, the trains for some reason. Maybe I got lost or maybe something happened for me to really remember my way there from Osaka then to Kyoto and then, well, I guess I'm spoiling you, but you'll know very soon I'm going to Fushimi Inari. Um, I remember the way there. I remember that I was early, I think, because I hadn't had breakfast yet. I think I went to get some onigiri at the konbini, which is literally in front of Fushimi Nari. I remember that there were high school kids sharing, or middle school, I don't probably high school kids, sharing the train, uh, which was really interesting. Um, but I think they had a school nearby. That's some images that are coming back to me right now. But enough of me, let's see what Ask Me does and says about this whole thing and what you Good morning, feel. everybody. I'm in Kyoto again for today. I'm wearing this because I'm feeling a little bit sick. Uh -uh. But the early start I wanted today, and I'm start. over here. It's like 9 a.m. or something. 9 a.m. And behind me, I believe, is Fushimi Inari. Here we've got a fox. Here we've got the entry gate. I was just at the konbini to get konbini. a few onigiri breakfast. I just left as fast as I could. Uh, it's expected to rain a lot today. Uh, so far, so good. Got my umbrella with me. Um, so let's let's make the most of our head start because I expect that since it's the weekend, the crowds are going to be coming. So let's go. Okay, <laughs> uh, just pausing real quick because at the time this was pre-pandemic, like a long time before the pandemic, and then wearing a mask in Japan for the first time. So now we're all over masks. We all wear masks, but at the time I was like, oh, I feel a little sick <laughs> and I'm gonna wear a mask. And I don't know, it was kind of a, a fun thing for me to experience for the first time. Now, obviously, we're all, we're all so tired of masks, we're all so sick of masks. So yeah, let's start Fushimi Nari with the fox. Early morning with my breakfast onigiri, and obviously I am here to see the red toy gate. That was the main thing that I wanted to see on my trip to Kyoto. I really like these gates. It, it was really awesome to walk through. I 
you can go, you know it's a tourist spot and you've seen it on photos, yada yada yada, it still really is. I still recommend you guys go there if you can. I didn't even get to see the whole thing, like climb high up in the mountains. It was just, I guess, initiation to Shiminari. Um, boy, you're in camera. I really want to go back and do the whole hike But I think I have plans for the rest of the day I think I don't remember what my plans were I want to hike Turns out I went completely Completely the wrong way Why is it so dark? There we go I saw this sign that's the temple where it happened. And wait for okay, it. let me just explain the local high school thing because it was so fluff and dumb. I don't even know if it's worth telling the story, but I do remember that I walked. I don't know like how students do it every single day. Maybe there's another way, but I remember it was a zigzagging climb to this to this high school, and then just arriving there and just being like, "This ain't it, yo." <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't figure out how to go because I think maybe the temple or the shrine I was going to was maybe behind it or I don't know why on earth I kept walking that way for so long and then I just had to walk all the way back down and it was a huge waste of time and um, I know I'm pretending to be like haha I made a mistake but I was, <laughs> I was probably really frustrated at the time feeling I did get lost. I think that's the time I got so lost that I had to ask the little old lady in this tiny little shop in the middle of nowhere uh, how to find the train station and uh, she was talking in Japanese so fast to me saying all the directions and I couldn't understand so <laughs> I feel like this is the day where it happened but I'm not even sure at this point. It's the day that I got up really early, went to Fushiminari super early to beat the crowd and then just ended up making all the mistakes by getting lost, by finding myself at this temple and not knowing which garden to go to and then getting lost again and it looks like I've arrived at Kiyomizudera in the center, like more in the, is it the center of Kyoto? Like in the main area of Kyoto, I don't want to say anything stupid. I was so lucky, I just stumbled upon this place and had a nice little meal. Like, it's, it's the weekend, so it's super crowded, full of tourists. As you can see, we're all queuing here to drink from that little fountain. Kind of random, but. I just really wanted to do it. At this point, we were just like following the crowds, kind of. That's one of the things that I mentioned in the previous episode that I liked a little less. And I'm starting to remember this day in Kyoto where I walked a whole bunch. And at the beginning, I was like, I don't mind the rain, but by the end of the day, I was soaking wet. My feet were just soaked. I'm very uncomfortably so like walking with that. Hey guys, it's been yep. a while since so I've given you an update. I am in Matsuyama Park looking for the Chioin Chio Chion something like that. And it's like chucking it down. I, don't, I think my umbrella isn't even <laughs> doing the trick anymore. I'm soaking soaking wet. Uh, my feet are soaking wet especially. I think something that I was feeling also and I don't want it to make it sound like I'm complaining um, I felt kind of obligated to go through with all the visits even though I was soaked and feeling a little sick and you know just getting everything wrong it's not like you can be like ah oh, you know what I'll try again tomorrow because you have a limited time during 
your stay in Japan, your stay in Osaka, your stay in Kyoto, like yada yada yada. So maybe some days, like on that day, I felt a little forced to continue my visit. I'm not saying I, pr I didn't appreciate them, I loved every single day and they weren't all perfect 100% of the time, but I do have a really fun memory from, all, from this time. But on this day, particularly now that it's coming back to me, I do remember that I was just following the crowd, moving forward, finding the next thing to see, finding the next thing to film. Um, and I mean, anyone in their own country, I think, would have just been like, you know what, I'm soaking wet from head to toe. Um, I'm just gonna go home and warm up and change and maybe rest and maybe I'll go out again or um, <laughs> maybe I'll try again tomorrow but when we're abroad we don't always have that luxury and I definitely feel that we while well, we're watching that video but it's kind of like okay get it, get the views, take it all in, you're in Kyoto you can do it. And then I remember this next piece of, piece of footage. I have actually my iPod in because I just needed to get into my bubble because it was just too much like being wet in the rain and the getting lost. <laughs> I definitely remember this specific point in the, in the day where I was pretty much done mentally, uh, but I wanted to finish what I had plan for myself on that list. Again, not complaining, no regrets whatsoever. I don't know, I feel like we don't really talk about this aspect of this go 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 kind of mindset that you have when you're traveling, that you have this limited amount of time to take in and enjoy everything. Is that the point where I get a plastic bag because everything, all my belongings are drenched? I think it may be, let me just pause it. I have this memory that I, it might be a next episode, but I don't think it rained that much afterwards for the other times I was in Kyoto. I think this was like the rainy day. I was walking, clearly, soaking wet through the rain, soaked through socks, shoes, but also I had a tote bag, like a fabric tote bag, and everything that was in there got soaked too, so that is why, if you remember my very first travel journal, that is why it is this big, because it got rained on and the pages just went boof. So I went into a store, a uh, typical thing for tourists where you can buy like snacks and souvenirs and stuff like that. Uh, I think I got a snack on purpose just so that I could go to the till and ask for a plastic bag. <laughs> and the first uh, lady didn't understand what I was trying to like explain with my hand like Oki kaban onegaishimasu, you know like what do you mean? But her colleague who was a little bit older, I don't know, I guess she understood gave me a big old uh, plastic bag to wrap everything around very helpful and you know she was trying to help me put it all together and I was like arigato gozaimasu, arigato gozaimasu because I don't know any other words she was like yeah yeah um, <laughs> Right now, I am in Gion, I think, um, and I just walk around to see the night lights and look around, but I don't do anything specific. Maybe I had specific things written down, but like I said, I was, I was done for the day. I just wanted to go home. I think I kept my headphones in for the rest of the trip, and somehow I'm pretty sure, I'm like 90% sure that I was listening to, an, to a Harry Potter audiobook. Uh, read by Stephen Fry, so that is a memory I have, Stephen Fry in, in Gion. But let me also say that I think this was the only time that I listened to something while I was walking. <laughs> I usually just try to, you know, be in the moment, but I needed that extra boost at the end of the day to just be in my bubble. <laughs> Get through it. <laughs> This will be my last stop for today because, yeah, my my feet are have been bathing literally all day, so I'm a little scared of what they look like right now. They're probably two fruit that I will be able to pickle and put in a onigiri as a uriboshi onigiri. Yes. Okay, so I feel like I talked a lot in this episode, so I'm not gonna go on and on. It's time to end this reaction episode which i hope you liked i want to know more about your kyoto thoughts and experiences and uh, places you want to see 
um, thoughts about travel maybe I don't know I want to know at all so leave it all in the comments down below I love reading your comments uh, it, it does literally keep me going with the whole YouTube thing so thank you so much for being there thank you so much for watching uh, if you haven't already feel free to subscribe for the next episodes give this video a thumbs up to show the algorithm that if you're interested in interacting with my content <laughs> uh, and I'll see you in the next one which uh, is in Osaka I'm, I'm, I'm spoiling myself but I have the playlist open in front of me so thank you for watching I hope you're well and I'll see you in the next one how are you? bye!